Thank you, uh, Wendy, for reading those. I appreciate it. Um, I'm blessed to have my uh, pastor not only be my pastor, but my father. Um, but what separates him apart is that he's just my dad, and that makes it all the, the best for me. But let us pray um, this afternoon. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done and continue to do for us and gathering us to here today. Um, Jesus, we pray that you would be the center of it all, O oh God, and that you would join us this afternoon. You would pull up a chair and you would be our guest of honor. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Our text for this morning is found in Numbers, the 20th chapter, and the verse 9 to 12. The Baptist in me wants to tell everybody to stand, but you don't have to worry. I'll read it for you um, right there where you are. Um, so Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and stuck, struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I will give them. Amen, the word of the Lord. Uh, today I want to preach from the subject, I still believe. There's no other character in the Bible that I love more than that of Moses. I've been in a Moses preaching season. I've been preaching about Moses every time I've had the opportunity because I love the story of Moses. I love it because Moses was called, but he was unqualified. I love it because Moses was timid, but he was chosen to lead. I love it because Moses was afraid to speak in public, but God chose him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you, wouldn't, you can guess that it bothered me so much when I read this text and I noticed that Moses wasn't allowed to enter the promised land. It bothered me because I've seen Moses go through a season. I've seen Moses go through hardship with ministry, and I know what it's like to go through hardship in ministry. And after all those times and all those dealings and phone calls and text messages, he didn't get into the promised land. And that bothered me today. And so today I want to put on our Moses hats today and to think what Moses would have thought about not getting into the promised land. The first thing Moses might have said about not getting into the promised land, he might have told us this afternoon that the people around us were either going to propel us to our promise or cause us to forfeit our future. Sometimes the people around us, even though it be our congregation, even though it be our mentors, they're either going to propel us to do something great or they're going to withhold us from what God has told us to do. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation. Sometimes we find ourselves in a place. We're going through a wanderous wilderness season just like Moses. I know some of you guys have gone through it because if you are in ministry or if you are a preacher, you must have gone through it. I know if you've definitely done youth ministry, you know what it's like to be like Moses. He's about 120 years old, but his ministry is still stuck in the wilderness. He's not going. He has nowhere to go. He's trying. He's trying. He's trying. But every time he looks somewhere to go, he runs off to spend time with the Lord and Aaron leads them to false prophets. Every time he's the one they want to run to. And he can't get any alone time with God. And it finds himself, he finds himself stuck because there in the wilderness, the people begin to complain. The people begin to complain and tell Moses, we need some water to drink. Moses was going through some, was going through. His sister Miriam, the prophetess, had just passed away. He was in the wilderness for a long time. He was going through a season. And there the people began to complain. And what I really took off of this text was sometimes the noise of the people around us, the noise of the congregation, the noise of what people want out of us, sometimes it allows us to get out of character. Sometimes it allows us to go through, even though we hear what God is saying to us, even though we know for sure what God has promised us, even though we can be clearly discern the voice of the Lord, sometimes in order to please others, sometimes out of our frustration, out of the noise of others, it causes us to lose what God has for us. And so Moses would like me to tell you this, this afternoon that the rock is still sufficient. The rock is still sufficient. Speaking to the rock is still sufficient. 
The second thing Moses might have wanted me to tell you this afternoon was that he had to learn that he had to stop going to the well one too many times. It seems as though in a similar occurrence in Exodus, the 17th chapter, we see Moses again in the wilderness, again with the people crying out, again with the people begging for water. We see that Moses encounters God and God tells him to pick up his staff and go and strike the rock. This is an opposite of what God had told him to do in Numbers. In Numbers, God instructs Moses to speak to the rock. In Exodus, he says to strike the rock. I would like to think Moses might have gotten a little comfortable with his, with his staff. I would like to think that rod of Moses might have made him a little bit too comfortable and a little too cocky. Let's not forget, it's with the staff that he struck down and it split the red seals. With his staff that he, he smited the rock once when God ordained him and it gushered water. So I, wouldn't like, I would like to think for myself that Moses did hear God, but sometimes we get a little comfortable with the things of God. Sometimes we get a little comfortable with what, what works already. Sometimes we get comfortable with the sermons that get people up out of their chairs a lot. Sometimes instead of speaking to the rock for new revelation, sometimes instead of speaking to the rock to birth new visions, we get comfortable and we do what we know works already. And Moses knew what worked already. He knew the staff had power. It was, through the, it was through the staff that many of the signs and plagues came about. It was through that. And in this particular time, when God tells him to speak to it, he uses what's familiar with him. And instead of listening to God, he forfeits his future. I would like to tell you a little story this afternoon. I remember when I uh, graduated from college and I was getting ready to... I was getting ready to get, start my first job. I thought I was the man. I, you know, I, I, I was getting off of my mother's cell phone plan. I was getting my own cell phone plan. And you know, I was a college student, so I was going through. Um, if anyone was a college student here, you know it's a tough time to be in college financially. It's a tough time. And I remember when I was getting ready to purchase my own cell phone. I had the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 5 was coming out. So you might have imagined a couple of years with the old phone crack screen. You know, sometimes you got to call people on the uh, speaker phone because the regular button doesn't work anymore. You know, when you're going through in college, you got to do what you got to do. But I remember when it was time for me to get my upgrade, I was so excited. I was so excited because I was saying, you know what, I'm going to get the newest phone. I'm going to purchase it for myself. I was so excited. And what I did was I went there. I was so excited. Not only that, because I had the phone for so long, so I had so many accessories. I had so many chargers. I had so many of the gadgets that worked for the phone already. And then I, I was playing with the phone after I purchased it. I used all the battery. And then it was time for me to charge the phone. And what happened was I tried to charge my phone with the old phone charger. And what happened was, what I realized was, is that the old charger didn't connect to the new phone. Now, some of you are probably wondering, why am I talking about the iPhone? I got my iPhone 6 now, I got the 6 Plus, I'm on the Galaxy, whatever the case may be. But what I learned from the situation was that when God upgrades you in a position, he also upgrades the way you have to connect to him. Sometime when God upgrades you to a position of leadership, he's going to require you to upgrade him and find him in a new place. The old tactics of the past won't work for the new spirit that he's getting ready to instill in you. Sometimes when God wants to do something new, it requires you to find him in a new place. And here we see Moses with the old tactics of the past. Sometimes as young preachers, we, 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 we get comfortable with the sermons because, you know, that's what the crowd wants to hear. We you know we get comfortable because that's what the youth of this generation wants to hear. You know, that's what they want to hear. That's what the worship they want to partake in. And we starve our, our, our congregation and they don't receive any revelation because the starvation and lack of edification. And they starve themselves. And the final thing that Moses might have wanted me to let you know this afternoon was that I still believe God to be faithful. What I love about Moses was even after the fact that he was denied, even after the fact that God had told him that he wasn't going to get into the promised land, he still worked for the Lord. 
with no, with, with no b blessings in, in front of him, with no uh, immediate reward in front of him, Moses realizes that God is still faithful. He realizes that God is still God. He realizes that although I may not be getting what everyone else is going to get, he's still Jehovah Jireh. No matter what is going on, I still believe him to be God. I know I'm not going to get what you're going to get. I know I'm never going to get to see what you're going to see. But what I know to be true, I still believe that God is still God. This this afternoon I wonder how many of us still believe this afternoon I wonder how many of us still believe God to be God because today I want to make a declaration I want to let you know that I still believe God to be God that despite what is despite what is legislated on this nation's highest court I still believe the word of God to be true that despite what my distinguished professor may say at the most prestigious theological institutions that I believe that God is still God and by faith he split the Red Sea I believe that one one day his glorious presence will crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall be raised and those who are in the Lord shall be caught up in there with them and there we shall ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. I wonder this afternoon, is there a young preacher that still believes? Is there a facilitator that still believes? Is there a divinity school that still believes? Is there an academy of young preachers that still believes this afternoon? I still believe God to be faithful. I know I'm going through in ministry. I know, I'm, I know inside of me I want to do better. I know I'm not living perfectly. But I still believe. I want to leave you with a story. There's a story of a young man who was laid off from his job. Frustrated, the young man stepped across the room. He went to think by himself, and he, when he left the building, he went to a old preacher that he knew. He knew of an old preacher, and he went to the, young, the old preacher, and he said, I've begged and begged God to say something to help me, preacher. The old preacher was sitting across the room. He spoke, and he, his reply was quiet. He said something, he uttered some words. And that young man, he couldn't hear the preacher. He said, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, preacher. I'm sorry, pastor, I can't hear you. So the, the preacher, the old man repeated himself once again. Again, he whispered something softly. Getting frustrated that he couldn't hear the advice of the preacher, he got right up under the preacher. He got right under his ear and he said something and the old preacher said, sometimes God will whisper something so that we can move closer to him. Sometimes, young preachers, we get frustrated in ministry. But it's okay. Sometimes members may go. People may leave, but it's okay. Because I still believe today, new revelation and new visions are birthed right when we're there and close under God. There's a psalm that says in Psalm 91, for he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Today, young preachers, I encourage you all to stay in the bosom of the Savior. May God bless you.